Thank you for tuning in to Market for the Material Value. We're Valentina Carga and Peter Jan Klandry, and today we're here with Professor Sigrid Zelensky. <laughs> What I got was that you are uh, that you are offering uh, your own work uh, as uh, or the results of your of your own artistic work uh, as an object of trading of uh, bidding betting uh, of uh, playing with values uh, and and all these uh, kind of uh, implications yeah. um, and. Uh, you want, of course, to interfere into the discussion of what is uh, the current economy, what is art economy, uh, how are we involved in that, uh, yeah. what kind of possibilities uh, have, do we have to act to, yeah. to, to transform, to change things. And also, and so how, yeah, how can, <coughs> can it be practically resolved through the use of new tools, like, yeah. uh, for instance, the internet, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's right. We really start with uh, a work that we have made, which is called Valentina and Peter Invest in Themselves. And that has a component which is an actual little sculpture. It's a, it's a small the coin, the golden, golden coin. coin. Yeah. But for us, this is very much a dialectical piece, because a conversational piece, if you want, because it's a discussion that we have, and we have scripted and we perform this discussion. Uh, so now we're thinking, you know, how can this be um, part of, an ar of the arts economy since it cannot be something that can be sold through a gallery, you know, to, through a typical system of art market. And we're also not famous enough so that it goes through institution the institutional economy mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're we want to create uh, a new market, let's say, let's put it that way. That can also go beyond our our own project and maybe accommodate projects of other people as well uh, that in that are in the same situation as us uh, because in a way we see it very much as a as a mechanism against precarity mm. that's what uh, our initial uh, discussion is mm. about it's a lot about our personal precarious situation mm. um, um, yeah, and also it has a long history. Yeah. We also live in a foreign country. We don't speak and the language. Also, so, uh, trying to think of systems that can validate, in monetary terms, immaterial projects such as discussions, social interactions, or digital works. Like many artists make YouTube movies. They put it on YouTube. It's free for everybody. They put time in it, but then they don't get money from it. So, how can we maybe find a way that th this can also? somehow create a market for them which is somehow a fair system yeah. which still allows the project or the artwork to be uh, public to be open to be free for everybody and not be able to have an ownership on, on that mm. so what we want to do is basically to create uh, these um, papers like kind of a proxies of the re of the initial artwork so we will give the, this artwork a body, which is not, it will not be only one, but many. Uh, and uh, we will sell them for very low prices uh, initially, so that anybody potentially, I mean, not anybody, of course, there's many people excluded from this, but I mean, I'm also people like us could buy into this. So it's an investment, uh, yeah. it plays very much with this idea of faith, you know, like mm -hmm. money is mm -hmm. faith. And we, it's it's an, a commonly accepted belief that somehow we construct it. So in the same way, we could uh, construct this belief around these bonds, these shares that we will issue, that will function function a little bit like uh, how Pokemon cards used to function among children. You know, everybody wants to collect them, or this I don't know these other cards with the football players you had in older times and, and things like that. And create values by rarity, or you create yeah. values by you want to like because you have an artwork. Let's say the artist needs a fee for that. Let's say two thousand euros or thousand euros. I don't know. We divide we divide it up in shares. Let's say hundred shares mm -hmm. of ten euros. Mm -hmm. Those are sold, but for the artist to sell through our platform the shares. 
he has to sign with us a contract that the artwork cannot be sold and has to go into public domain and has to stay free. Mm. But he gets paid for that. So he does it. People get the shares and then the shares become are rare in itself and they are a trace or they are they are a symbol of the art project. So maybe somebody wants to collect all the shares of the artwork just from for the sake of collecting, or maybe somebody wants to make money and he wants to gather as many possible different art projects in order to see which artist becomes more famous or he has more options to speculate on this market. So we kind of try to detach the art object, whether it's material or immaterial, with the art market with a value price from it. So that it somehow creates these two different things so that the artwork yeah. stays free, open, and that the still there is this monetary system which can be speculate because the artist needs also validation, monetary validation for his work. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of discussion whether it's yeah. ethical or not because we don't like to focus so much on money, we'd like to shift focus to to other types of values, to social bonds or to... We have a problem with financialization in general because we think you know that everything we do falls into a monetary logic because you have to measure and, and count you know every single piece of our lives. That's what's happening. Right. So it's a, it's it's beyond. Um, uh, it's actually an ontological struggle that we are going through. Uh, that and with our project, we are reproducing this struggle because we are not producing a new system. We're just playing with the existing one. Yeah. And kind of okay, yeah, maybe we expose it, and maybe people can have a critical experience of this system as well. But we've been uh, so much puzzled with like how could we exit this um, this kind of thinking? We feel so much trapped in it. I was reading upstairs this book on doubt that you uh, yeah. that you edited. The cross up on doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's so why, that's why I feel. That's what we're uh, we're going through. Like we're adopting value, basically, and we're adopting our position towards value and what we believe in. Uh, and on the other hand, needing <coughs> money, you know, in a place that is in a world that is ruled by the rule of exchange. Yeah. So because know, like maybe this move uh, towards balance. immaterial artworks open also up the possibility and free artworks like YouTube videos where they're open maybe the possibility to have to go away from this also maybe there is a possibility because they do it which means somehow they it's more important to do it than to get paid for it so but it of course creates precarity and there's a question how can we escape precarity but in a way there is also maybe this possibility to 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 also use this to go away from a monetary thinking to go to go away from a thinking uh, yeah, as, as with value as money, because value is of course much many more things than just yeah. money. So we use these discussions around yeah. this project as a kind of a psychoanalytical tool. And mm -hmm. we're collecting them and that's, that's our research basically. So what we're doing now, it mm -hmm. will go into this database of podcasts that we're building that um, have somehow a continuity like from how we started and how mm. this is developing. Um, and did you did you do strong uh, analysis of, of economical theory and, and things like that? The, the, is this part of your of your project, or uh, how deep did you did you get into it? I mean, we're not <coughs> uh, we're reading theory as much as we can. Um, we're not very academic. We don't have an academic approach towards mm. this. But uh, of course, I'm reading. I'm very influenced by uh, Marxist mm -hmm. theory, yeah, and, and the, the, the the current debate about commoning and different uh, alternative economies mm -hmm. and yeah. things like I really that. Really like also the Adam Curtis um, "Machines of Love and Grace." I think it's the one with the yeah. This this yeah. series of Adam Curtis. Have you yeah. seen? Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that's how s somehow shows, you know, w what's happening because all, all these kind of hippies from the 70s ended up creating yeah. Silicon Valley, you know, that's, yeah. that's the point. So I think it's not only about what values you put on the table, but also how you work around these values. And I, I find a kind of a 
problematic there, how they apply this uh, ideology somehow. And I feel that maybe we're in an era that that we're reproducing the same, like think about all these startups that going forward with this idea of a sharing economy, right? Like uh, Airbnb or Facebook or Uber, mm -hmm. but somehow it's really turned totally the other way around. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, all about capturing value and not so much about sharing anything mm -hmm. in particular. Yeah, it's a difficult, <laughs> very, very difficult field and, and not so not so easy um, to access. And of course, all the experiments which are done in this field uh, can help uh, you and help us to understand it better, of course. Um, but um, it's not uh, it's not easy. I personally uh, mistrusted this kind of economies right from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I've also written about that my first text on the internet seven items on the net was already very skeptical uh, but uh, this is another this is another question uh, perhaps I always thought that uh, internet uh, in economic terms for artists uh, follows uh, uh, Georges Bataille's idea of an economy of expenditure um, mm -hmm. which means uh, you don't earn uh, your money uh, inside of this uh, medium uh, but uh, you, your reproduction is done somewhere else and you use it for simple expenditure. Uh, mm -hmm. You have uh, like a poet uh, who writes <laughs> the poems at home and gives them to his friends and sends them to wherever. Um, <clears throat> and uh, with a very, very few exceptions, it still works uh, like that. Uh, and, um, but uh, perhaps it's uh, one, one, one important issue, I think, is uh, the question uh, of uh, where I want um, to move or into which uh, space I want to move. Do I really want to develop um, a model, um, an idea, uh, with which I can um, uh, conquer uh, the center uh, of society uh, in the sense of, a, of an alternative uh, economy which can mm -hmm. rule the world, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, am I uh, aiming at creating the famous uh, niches uh, where artists always were at home and where they felt best because uh, this is uh, relatively uh, autonomous uh, in relation to the uh, center mm -hmm. of power and, and centers of power and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is still uh, an enormous challenge. What, what, what can this kind of... Uh, niche economies look like uh, and when I'm asking for them and when I'm thinking about uh, when I'm thinking in this direction um, then of course I have to step out of the regular uh, paths uh, which hundreds and millions of others are also going mm -hmm. uh, when they want to produce a record when they want to produce a book uh, or whatever there are these huge uh, amounts of, of share economy projects <laughs> already uh, in the internet and now since a while also artists are going into this direction. I think uh, this this tactic has to be uh, modified, uh, it has to become more radical, experimental uh, mm -hmm. in a specific sense. Uh, taking the risk perhaps that only a few people uh, will join this uh, project <laughs> because yeah. only a few people will understand this kind of radicality and, and yeah. experimental mm -hmm. uh, approach. Uh, all these other uh, shared economy projects have too much uh, the, let's say, uh, the illusion uh, that this model can be uh, a a center of future economic structure mm. yeah. um, and I very I deeply doubt that yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know they even the politicians 
um, who are responsible and the bankers and so on who are responsible they even don't understand when you when you are articulating uh, an alternative idea um, I recently had a discussion in uh, ZKM in, in Karlsruhe with some of these idiots uh, <laughs> and uh, it was a mixed audience but there were also some of uh, the Polit political sphere and the financial sphere mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after my short presentation uh, they were criticizing me because uh, I did not mention Europe at all and I was very irritated because I did not want to talk about Europe and uh, but uh, so I did not mention it basta uh, and I said then uh, I'm not interested in Europe. I'm not interested in your Europe. Europe is a machine which runs uh, without my care. Uh, and this machine I'm not interested in. And then I, I said, if I'm interested, uh, and this is, uh, I'm coming now to, to your uh, project and the re the, how I see uh, questions related to it. Uh, I said, if uh, Europe can be something interesting, uh, in the future, uh, we have to uh, start at this point uh, that it has to be a weak construction, a weak construction, not a strong construction. Yeah. All the politicians are trying to make a strong Europe. Now. Yeah. Yeah. When you read the discussion now with the Greeks and so on, we have to be strong. The Greeks have to be stay inside because we have need. We we are the competitors with the Asian market and with the Indian market and the entrepreneurs from Brazil, Latin America, and whatever. We have to be strong, unit, unified, universal, and so on. Europe forever. I said no. We need a weak uh, Europe, uh, which means uh, that analog uh, to the idea of a weak uh, subject uh, which is only which can only be strong through uh, the other yeah. uh, we need uh, a political construction uh, which is following this idea uh, for the individuum for the single subject we have learned that already that the old strong autonomous subject is not working anymore yeah. but for the Big political constructions. We are still in, still believing in this in this in this uh, energy use. And of course, yeah. of course. And this is this is uh, this is wrong. And um, or uh, at least from my point of view, this is wrong and uh, leads us uh, into a dead end road. Yeah. Um, but um, the the idea of weakness uh, of of a strength of dialogue. This is. By the way, a typical Flusser idea, uh, mm -hmm. the strength of dialogue, uh, but dialogue in heterogeneities, uh, in, with, yeah. with contradictions, with, uh, yeah. uh, with things which are not fitting together at all and so on. Yeah. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what we have to develop and which is still uh, some kind of a utopia, but it's, it's possible we can, we can, we can still do it. But the risk is that we are that we know this will never be the center. Uh, this will always be the periphery <laughs> where we are, um, like uh, good art always is, <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, and occasionally there can be a move, okay, you make a uh, cooperation with the MoMA, but only <laughs> to learn how they are working, how the machine's working, and then you are doing your... <laughs> uh, and uh, so... Uh, but and it's also uh, a, such a huge taboo to, to, to acknowledge weakness. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think it's a very... And actually, that's the kind of ontological paradigm that yeah. we're see seeking. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And that's also my problem with all these um, systems. You know, you call it machine. I, to me, it, thinks, uh, it helps to think of it as a system, which yeah. is something very similar. Yeah. Uh, that the problem is when they become he hegemonic and actually that was always my problem in, in studying architecture because the big paradigm was Absolutely. back minister Absolutely. Fuller Absolutely. and Archigram, you know, all this yeah. superstructure, very yeah, machinistic view of a world that functions in a, in a very linear manner. And I, I, w I remember this talk you did uh, Transmediale some years ago where you were talking about atemporality yeah, right. and, and chronologic order. Is atemporality, yeah. yeah, and chronologic order mm. and um, 
uh, and you were mentioning this three like Kronos, uh, um, what was the middle one? Ion, the, uh, Kairos. <laughs> Kairos and Ion, mm. which in my perception is a little bit, you know, uh, like past, present and future. In a, way. a little bit, yeah. yeah. Mm. <clears throat> and I was, I was thinking that um, that a perception of you know of an interplay between these three, it's it's kind of a, a deliberative view on how we can see the world. Mm. And I was thinking if we can conceive an economy of mm. this atemporality, that could be also because time and an economy and money is very, mm. it goes very well together as well as concepts and I think a big problem is that we we think of everything so linearly without taking account that the past is also an alive uh, entity is not somewhere closed in the box uh, behind us that everything can be reworked because it's it's actually uh, in how we think of the things it's mm. all in our heads and like how we construct reality reality mm. is not um, something uh, that is uh, um, commonly acknowledged is different for everybody of course and maybe we can find some some places or to uh, of communication among each other but, but this this know. this question of of uh, hegemony uh, and uh, the relation uh, to the notion of weakness um, is um, I think something um, which is very important because uh, also the the so-called left movements uh, really did not uh, or most of them did not understand that uh, because uh, of course their will was to to change society as they thought it should be and mm -hmm. uh, they took they take over uh, the hegemonial uh, <coughs> power uh, and then they organize everything uh, with equal rights and, <laughs> and so on and so on. This is not working. Uh, as we know, meanwhile, from, from uh, historical experience in Germany, we, we had this quite strong uh, green movement uh, during the 70s and the 80s. Now they are in many parliaments part of the power, they were even part of this economic power um, uh, 10 years ago with, with uh, our Chancellor Schröder uh, who has uh, ruined, so to speak, the last elements of a social <laughs> construction <laughs> which we had. Uh, this is exactly the model which Schröder and Wickel uh, developed 10 years ago which they are now offering for Greece. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. uh, people should work longer uh, till 67 and all the problems will be solved yeah. and all the, all the same rubbish. You know I'm Greek, right? Yeah, yeah I know that you're Greek. <laughs> and uh, so this is not working. And, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, this, this other side, this other uh, possibility to, to commit uh, weakness but make something uh, beautiful out of it and make something valuable uh, out of it. I think this is uh, this is what what we somehow still uh, have uh, to learn. Uh, and as far as I know, uh, these uh, models uh, for economy uh, there is uh, still nothing uh, much better than than Georges Bataille's other uh, economy, the other economy, the other economy, uh, which is trying uh, to uh, describe that. Georges Bataille was not so far when he developed that as an alternative to communist and mm -hmm. capitalist economies in the 1930s. Um, he was not uh, so far uh, to be really able uh, to understand this notion of a weak subject uh, and uh, of a specific uh, weaknesses um, which comes from uh, or which gets its uh, strength from dialogue and from the exchange uh, with others. Um, but um, he had at least uh, some very good uh, basic ideas uh, because uh, without understanding art as a as a form of expenditure um, of uh, something uh, which is will always be luxurious uh, and something yeah. very special, uh, we don't uh, understand anything about art. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is and this is what I mean. I'm, I'm not very clear in what I'm saying because I'm, I also did not 
really prepare now for for our conversation but mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but this is very important the uh, to to use words which are perhaps at the moment taboo and and which which you which are not used uh, try to be elitist in a specific sense mm -hmm. luxurious in a specific sense okay if we if we are poor uh, we can uh, celebrate luxury Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, in a in a radical way, not in the way Damien Hirst did it, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but exactly. in, in just the opposite way. Uh, and um, so we are uh, we are celebrating this this idea of 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 luxury and of expenditure, uh, and uh, this is part of our aesthetical. Uh, uh, concept, uh, which I think is extremely important. The, the theoretical ideas are perhaps not even so difficult to think, but to transform this into aesthetical tactics and, and, and uh, not strategies, tactics, mm -hmm. um, is, is, is uh, difficult, mm -hmm. uh, is not easy. I'm, I worked with, uh, as you might know, I worked with, with groups like, like uh, for example, Nobotic research already in the beginning of the 90s when they were developing first ideas for collaborative software. Mm -hmm. um, and we went to Sao Paulo and to Tokyo and we worked with, with urban planners and architects and thought about how to create uh, yeah. networked uh, labor, uh, yeah. which is developing new ideas. There was a, um, a project on the Biennale, where they were invited, uh, they were part of the Austrian Pavilion, I think, in 1996 or 97, with with a with a project on immaterial labor. I don't know if you, if mm -hmm. you have seen that. This is a very yeah, interesting project. Sure. There's also a book uh, going with it. Nobody research. You will find it quite do well documented in the internet. They have a very good uh, website. How do you immaterial. Nobody? Nobotic. Nobotic. Uh, it's a it's a mixture of uh, knowing and yeah. roboting. Uh -huh. Nobotic uh, okay. research. These are three people who are occasionally still working together, but not not really. Yeah. They, but they worked a lot together in the 1990s. They are all professors now, <laughs> of course. Mm. Yeah. This is the way you can do this economy of expenditure. Mm. Uh, exactly. And uh, mm. they are all professors in Zurich uh, at ah. the at the art school. Yeah. So right in the center of uh, economic financial power, at least. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what's our future? You, know, <laughs> you will like you will be professors. And then there's uh, there's another group which I like very much, uh, the duo from from Bologna, the Zero One uh, group. Do you know this? Mm -hmm. uh, Zero One, uh, Franco, and what's her name? Like got the second name zero uh, one uh, dot org they they use different combinations with uh, sometimes it's five zeros and five ones or seven zeros uh -huh. <laughs> but you will find it in the okay. internet they make crazy projects and, and they are pretty good uh, and they also go uh, into uh, the real world into urban environments and uh, Work in this connection of the internet and the and the uh, environments of the real, for example, with their project uh, they did. Uh, I don't know five years ago or so. Uh, they uh, changed uh, one of the very famous places in Vienna. Uh, it, I think it was Karlsplatz or something like very historically very famous place into Nike place, <laughs> Nike and, and and they made a huge campaign around it uh, and everybody uh, in Vienna thought this is this was real because uh, uh, there was a protest movement uh, <laughs> by the Super Vienna important. people against the changing the name uh, of yeah. this and they and there was this this commercial campaign which they all simulated oh, yeah. uh, and this was it's a wonderful project. <laughs> super uh, provoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super provoking and I like this kind of interventions. Yeah. You know, they are and, and they and, yeah, and they have this they have this this kind of let's say, I don't know, elitist and so this is not a model they develop which you can use to build up an an, an economy yeah. which can carry the whole society. It's impossible. It's <laughs> it's something different. Uh, and <clears throat> 
the the project as far as I read about your project I can't I, can't, I, I simply don't know enough about it I, I, I can't say very much about it uh, the idea with the coin with your portrait on it and so on this is all but this is all a little bit too neat <laughs> everything for me uh, and uh, you can play with that and you can see what you can do with it but this fits still very somehow perfectly into this uh, kind of uh, co cooperative models uh, which are uh, at the moment uh, developed which is nothing bad I'm not criticizing that because uh, this is definitely better than uh, a society which does not know anymore what solidarity is and, and what cooperation can be and so on of course uh, but uh, I think artists have to go a step further uh, they have to 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 to, to make a sidestep uh, which which goes out of these regularities uh, and uh, tries to develop the dif uh, to develop a different kind of of energy mm. uh, and I repeat myself I think that this this kind this this idea of of a specific kind of weakness which can be beauty uh, which also fits to the simple fact that you are the smallest cooperation which one can imagine you are mm -hmm. a duo mm -hmm. <laughs> a pair a couple <laughs> so to speak uh, is uh, 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 a good starting point <laughs> perhaps you develop something where you just uh, where you just support each other nothing <laughs> else you know this is this is an economy this is an economic model uh, of exchange and of dialogue uh, uh, when you do that in a very radical way, uh, you can at least uh, survive. You too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you pay each other. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, I mean, we're doing, we're doing this for real. You know, that's not a project. That's our reality, basically. Of course, that's what you're doing from morning to night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also, I've been. I've been doing, um, and Peter was involved all, a lot, uh, these projects about autonomy. So I've been doing this project called mm -hmm. the Summer School for Applied Autonomy, actually with, with students of yours as well. Because where, I was, where was that? I, that was uh, in Marzan, but it was part of Studium Generale. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I was teaching then a seminar. Mm -hmm. And what we did for there was to create this kind of self-sustainable infrastructure where you needed nothing exter external to survive, mm. apart from perhaps a, a basic exchange economy with the neighborhood for you know things that you cannot mm. produce mm. by yourself, like salt or, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and that was extremely basic, but somehow very uh, confronting as well, because one would confront with uh, he, his or her own needs. Mm. Uh, in a way that we have never experienced before. Um, so that that's a, but that's a different um, path. I mean, of course it of course it's not a coincidence that I'm doing now this project. Uh, so it has a, a similar kind of thinking inside, but uh, we wanted to see it from a different perspective. You know, like how does this work when we place it in the in the context of our world that works very much with money and it's very much financial, everything is about financialization. Yeah. It's kind of trying to use these this ideas of self-sufficiency, this popularity of so this whole uh, ecological debate to, or self-sustainable thing to put that in a financial art context. How can we close uh, some loops or ma make our, yeah. uh, our, our own artwork Financed ourselves yeah. somehow, and that was a, a lot problems. about production of everyday goods mm. like food and, mm. and energy. Mm. Mm. But when art production comes also into play, because that's what we—that's our currency as well. Uh, not only our own labor in preparing our food, but also our labor for making art. Mm. Can can this also come in a sort of an everyday economy or? That can be. Um, oh, I'm lost a bit now. 
<laughs> you can define it like that, but I'm, I'm, uh, I have a different, uh, different approach to that because uh, uh, labor uh, is something uh, which is for me not identical with uh, with developing, generating uh, art processes and um, yeah. and uh, even art uh, products. Uh, so we have. Perhaps to be careful with this this latter uh, thing yeah. with products, but uh, labor uh, for me in the classical sense of Marx still is uh, the yeah. the alienated form of of doing something for purposes which are outside of myself. Uh, the purposes are uh, defined by by others uh, mm -hmm. uh, who are not identical uh, with me. Um, uh, artwork. Uh, is not uh, labor work. <laughs> it's not, uh, and so we have to be careful with that. And and uh, uh, this, but this also has to be somehow the starting point uh, for this other economy, um, because uh, as an artist, um, I have this possibility um, to be identical with myself uh, and uh, to. Uh, to develop uh, something uh, which uh, which is close uh, to my projection uh, of the world, and uh, this is another economy mm -hmm. than uh, alienation and and everything else. And and, and I think, uh, but this is my. Uh, my point of view, I think these uh, we have to, to work with, with several economies uh, or perhaps even many economies, yeah. many different economies. Uh, only one is following uh, this economy which is best known to us, uh, which is uh, more or less carrying uh, the center uh, of the current world. Uh, and uh, the other possibilities uh, uh, we still even did not uh, explore really uh, in uh, different parts of cultures, in different parts of the world, in different mm. constellations uh, and so on. Uh, there are uh, very, very different uh, ideas of economy, although they don't name them like that. Uh, I pers personally, uh, I uh, for my own work, I developed since decades uh, this idea of an economy of friendship, uh, which are also called like that, economy of friendship, um, which uh, is close to, to Flusser's idea of the dialogue within heterogeneity. Mm -hmm. um, it's an economy, uh, it's of course an economy of, of thinking, of ideas, uh, which... Uh, which shares uh, the idea, the 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 the, the knowledge uh, about uh, new things, new developments, new ideas with others, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, out of this, uh, uh, different kind of ideas can be generated. Um, and uh, to organize this economy of friendship, uh, I don't need. I need a little bit, but I don't need very much. Yeah. Uh, I need. Uh, I need uh, hospitality, uh, all these kind of taboos, you know, nowadays. I need mm -hmm. hospitality, I need the possibility to, to give hospitality uh, to others. If I don't have this possibility, I don't do the project. Uh, it's very simple. Um, that, that means I have to be able to invite uh, these friends uh, for dinner. Uh, I have uh, to be able to, to give them accommodation. Um, and so on, and then we can work together, and then we can develop something. This is how we develop these five books on variantology, more or less. This is economy of friendship. Very famous people from all over the world. They got a minimum of money uh, just to to spend time together uh, in Napoli uh, to have uh, a few dinners uh, yeah. together, uh, and so on and so on. Um, and um, this economy of, of friendship has one. Uh, and this is why I meant this series with your constellation. Uh, this uh, economy of friendship has one very important precondition, and this is uh, that uh, uh, one and the other 
has a relation of attractiveness to each other. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it would not work. Uh, mm -hmm. The other has to be attractive to you and the other way around. Uh, so I like the thought of this person and I want him mm -hmm. and this person is coming because he or she knows when we are coming together there will be an energy which yeah. makes, uh, makes something. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this, is an, um, this is an Empedoclean term uh, to be uh, attractive uh, to the other, not repulsive. Yeah. Uh, this economy I'm dreaming of is not an economy which you can use to, to make a war, for example. It's not, it will not work in war. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it works uh, when, when this very, very basic assumptions uh, are there. Uh, and uh, with these kind of... Uh, let's say, sub-ideas, uh, I'm already pretty close in aesthetical questions, or close, at least close to aesthetical questions, and then, then you can... But this is your task, you are the artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm only a thinker. <laughs> we are totally practicing a of friendship like, as well, because uh, what we do with people we invite, we don't pay them, but we make dinners. Yeah, yeah. We didn't make a dinner with you, yeah. but you're very yeah. much invited to our next one, I think, by the, for the end of the We always try to get a group of people that we feel attracted to together. It's a yeah, six or yeah, it's wonderful. Eight. These are, these are very similar. important steps. These are yeah. extremely yeah. important steps. I, we ju I just had a, uh, last week a wonderful experience with two uh, Chinese artists, AGG, this is also a duo like you, 8GG. <laughs> they are doing a lot of music performances with dancers and so on. They are very, mm. very interesting. They are living in Berlin here at the mm. moment too. Uh, for a while I had them to get a um, residency here. And so they invited me and my wife to dinner. Uh, and uh, this was so so wonderful because uh, I did I did not know. But we, we when we met first we were, we had some talks about food and so on, and uh, and then uh, uh, they said okay uh, as long as we are here in Berlin we are trying to find the best Chinese food for you in because Chinese food usually is not good in Berlin. All the most of the Chinese mm -hmm. restaurants are rubbish. Yeah, um, and then they said they get sent me an email that they have found they have found the chef uh, uh, and uh, this was very very uh, surprising uh, finally uh, to make the long story short we ended up uh, in a in a uh, very ugly building in in berlin middle in the berlin mitte uh, near mauerstraße one of these uh, pardon no, that's Japanese. That's Japanese. No, 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 no. Uh, we ended up in the fifth floor uh, of one of these uh, ugly buildings, which which comes from the GDR the times, the Plattenbauten, uh, but very horrible on the corner <laughs> of the street. Uh, fifth floor in a in a one uh, room apartment uh, where uh, a Chinese man uh, was uh, living, Mr. Wunderbar. Uh, in uh, a very small kitchen, one room apartment, he had uh, laid the table for us four, uh, and he was cooking for us. Yeah. This was absolutely the best oh baking duck yes. I've ever seen, yeah. <laughs> I've ever eaten. Uh, wonderful, you know, and this is a very strange, this is a heterotopical mm. situation yeah. uh, inside of this Berlin Mitte, which is now full of idiots yeah. of tourists and, and, and so on and so on and there you have uh, this this kind of um, and it was not I'm sure of course they paid f for, for the food and they paid for him uh, but it was not expensive yeah. <laughs> it was just but it was a you know a heterotopical situation mm -hmm. and uh, inside uh, and, and I don't even know if, if the term economies is the right term for that. It's inside of the of of everything which is existing. It's this kind of uh, nucleus uh, for um, a different kind of a world, an alternative world. This is how it also can be, yeah. uh, but it's also impossible to implant that as a regularity of the whole society. This would not or work. Or to design something. Yeah, like that. it would not work. No, it would not it has work. to just happen. And this is what I mean with this radicality uh, of, of, of an alternative uh, which goes into uh, even a, 
aesthetical dimensions because it was uh, it was a strain. Everything was very strange. Uh, the television set was running. It was a little bit like in Shanghai. <laughs> uh, the, there was a curtain, a transparent curtain, uh, which uh, divided the room, and there was his bed. Yeah. <laughs> so we were eating <laughs> beside his bed, and he was in his kitchen and cooking for us. It was yes. all very strange. And uh, but this is. This was it, you know, <laughs> and uh, I will I will never forget this, and in my in my life, I'm sure. Uh, so it's about experience as well. Absolutely, it's yeah. experience. Experience is extremely important. To, to, for our I, I'm always interested with my work to create this kind of experiences of heterotopias. Yeah. This does not mean that this should be a theater, because you still yeah. it's still kind of real. Yeah. A theater is a different yeah. thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, that, that's why we're interested also to play with what is existing there. So in this case, it's, it's the market and not to create something yeah, totally staged, but yeah. still something that somehow mm. yeah, intervenes with the... Rea with the yeah, I don't even want to use the term reality because I'm so confused about what reality yeah. is. No, but experience but is a good term. I think art is all about experience. Experience is extremely important. This is, this is the realm of artists. Uh, science, because there is also a lot of uh, discussion about artistic research and all these kind of things. Yeah. But if it makes sense, um, it has experience as its central category artistic uh, research because yeah. you go through the uh, experienceable through the sensual uh, this is uh, what what makes uh, art so valuable uh, scientific uh, approach strategical approaches and so on this is something different but yeah. experience is in the center uh, so we it always what we are developing as artists, it always has to go through uh, the experienceable, and uh, otherwise, it's yeah. just a concept and nothing yeah, else. Exactly. <laughs> but how? <I> my <coughs> question would be then: How to create uh, experiences for ourselves and for others to share this, without design them or systematize them or plan them? Because then it tends to go to this category of hegemony, you know, like. I create the best system and I impose it to you. Mm -hmm. So like how can we create these experiences also together with others and you know include a dialogue? In, yeah. in this is this is this is this is this is your life. task to yeah. develop that. I mean you are the artist. <laughs> Uh, when, when you when you would be uh, when you would be uh, a physicist or uh, a chemist, I would say, or a biologist, I would say, okay, uh, you have to to create uh, experimental uh, structures and experimental um, conditions uh, through which you can uh, generate surprise, uh, the non-planned uh, result and, 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 and all these uh, yeah. surprise generators is a very nice term. Um, so, uh, of course, that's a step, but this is your, your, you have to I do it. Actually, <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> no, for sure, I know. It's project, a... Otherwise, how we have it now, I do like that there is this very big possibility there's a black market of these things. Yeah. And I, I, I quite like that, that that's possible, that it's kind of a, a structure where everybody feels... Where anything can happen. Yeah, everybody feels a part of this artwork, everybody feels like... Uh, as an experience, you feel like you you are part of something because you're with just select hundred people, so you feel good about this. And then how you deal with that, and if you can like how these uh, urges to to get all of the cards or to like, and how then you can meet with persons in real life to swap them, or you can organize I don't know talks to or I don't know like events to swap the cards or th these kind of economies. This, I think, but we'll, you know, like we do it in a very small scale. But we'll, like, may, uh, maybe we will never hear or see see this happen. Yeah, we, can, we can only speculate that it might happen. But uh, you yeah, know, but but but, uh, but it. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, but I think the direction is interesting to think uh, because um, this also uh, is about uh, the relation between what conceptually is called locality. Um, and uh, the so-called global. 
the experience uh, will always be connected with, with locality, yeah. with, with a specific uh, time, space, uh, defined relation and so on and yeah. so on. Um, whereas the strategical will always be connected uh, with the global, so to speak. Mm. Um, and um, uh, of course, uh, to create tensions between those two uh, concepts is extremely important, but the locality yeah. is definitely that where art is more at home uh, than uh, in uh, Globality, uh, only when it becomes global art, <laughs> then, then it's more, the, but this is, this, is, uh, this is an ideological concept anyway. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Peter Weibel is playing in a very risky way now with, with the Globale uh, in, in Karlsruhe, he makes this mm. huge exhibition, yeah. Globale, and he, not so many people perhaps will understand that, by, but he opened it with two very, very huge installations, uh, mm. one by Ikeda, the Japanese uh, artist. I'm sure this costs more than half a million or so. This, yeah. this, uh, and then this cloud, which uh, uh, a rain cloud, which is hanging into the set cam, mm. um, which also is very expensive, of course. <laughs> Does it two, actually two really? very large uh, installations, nothing else. And this opens the global. I mean, this is stupid. And he knows that it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's a risky uh, way because he's doing this this uh, wandering, uh, wandering along this this uh, sharp knife, yeah. <laughs> razor blade, <laughs> or something like that of of irony, of sarcasm, of cynicism, uh, and uh, and uh, but also a little bit. Um, but I think what. Uh, <laughs> A little bit uh, uh, sincere, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It because yeah. if we take something like a clown, it's quite a yeah, yeah. global, absolutely, universal. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Thing, so it's yeah. quite yeah. serious. I mean, it's also a lot about semiotics. Like, what do we think of, of, yeah. of, the, of when we hear the word cloud or of when course. we see a cloud? Of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wanted to say that with our project, we're aiming a little bit. And we will finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a big, we, we, we will meet another time. Yes, but now, now we have to finish. Yeah. <coughs> uh, that we're aiming both in, in uh, to address the global, because we're making still an internet platform, mm. uh, but also we're aiming in local experiences. We, that's why we're doing yeah. all these dinners yeah. and personal meetings. And probably that's why, that's what we will do for Transmedial as well. Yeah, but the globality, uh, the, the connection, this is what I want you to say, the connection, the contact with, with uh, the global, so to speak, um, does not necessarily mean that you, uh, are, uh, that you are having the contact with a whole uh, globality. Uh, I'm, I'm, of course, this is extremely uh, fascinating that we can have poetical uh, relations with people who are living very far uh, mm -hmm. away and uh, under very different uh, conditions. I use the term mondialité or mundialité for that and not globality or global relation mm -hmm. because we need different terms also otherwise we are yeah. falling immediately into the traps <laughs> of all this. Uh, but uh, perhaps uh, other localities uh, in the in other parts of the world uh, can be uh, a more interesting connection uh, than uh, this one from locality uh, to, global to, to globality. Um, groups in, in uh, Shanghai or in yeah. uh, wherever uh, who are dreaming with similar uh, dreams like you yeah. are doing um, and uh, people in I don't know, in South America, uh, in Ecuador, in Bolo in, in uh, mm -hmm. Colombia or whatever, might be more interesting for you to, to than just to address uh, a global audience uh, yeah. which is spread out all over the world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think this, this is becoming more and more interesting also for us when you are traveling through experience, you are, you are going somewhere uh, and then you are uh, immediately thinking, I'm at home here. 
Yeah. Uh, because why am I at home here? Be because there are some strange energies and constellations which fit in, into that one. I think it has yeah. nothing to do with 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 the, with the country or with ever. The country ha is becoming less and less important anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's only important for this machinery which we call European Union and yeah. and, and whatever, but not for us yeah. countries. Uh, what is was it? What is a country? Yeah. Uh, no, we're I, I just went uh, through Ingo Günther's work uh, the other day again when I was thinking about our exhibition mm -hmm. uh, on Flosser. Uh, Ingo Günther, uh, we don't need this this kind of um, unities uh, anymore, and and they have historically become obsolete. Uh, and but the, yeah. the, the the ruling economy is still working with that. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's why it doesn't uh, function. It does not function. <laughs> also, yeah. uh, Ingo Günther, that's, that's what I wanted to mention. He created uh, already in 1993, he started a project. Uh, you should also study his work a little mm -hmm. bit because uh, it's touching a lot your, your, uh, your ideas. Um, he started a project uh, where he created uh, a refugee republic or mm -hmm. a republic of refugees uh, re because uh, already in the early 90s there were quite a lot of refugees yeah. moving yeah. Uh, over the planet yeah. um, and um, philosophically going with the idea of uh, Hannah Arendt from uh, 1940s uh, she wrote this beautiful text, We Refugees, which is a, a, a very short uh, essay. Um, and uh, starting with, with the point, uh, why do we look at refugees always as, uh, as opera, as uh, sacri sac sacrified, mm -hmm. uh, something which is sacrified, mm -hmm. some, not to, no, they are, mm -hmm. uh, they are the avant-garde uh, yeah. of the, uh, of, of the people uh, and uh, the war guard, this is the term uh, she, she used. Um, and Ingo Günther uh, created this republic, uh, refugee republic, with uh, the sign of Rolls Royce, uh, yeah. you know, the same RR. Uh, so, of course, Rolls Royce was also trying to sue him uh, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. on, and this was part of the game, but it, they, they were not successful mm -hmm. because this was an art project, yeah. luxury again, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, to combine. Uh, refugees with Rolls Royce was was pretty mad, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but it was a wonderful idea. So he created passports. He wanted to create uh, their own economy, uh, and and it, it was only happening in the internet, of course. This mm -hmm. kind of new yeah. republic, uh, but uh, it was a good idea. It was a, it's a, it's a yeah. still a very strong idea. And suddenly this comes up again. Hannah Arendt's text is now reread again. Giorgio yes. Agamben has yeah. uh, uh, written a text on that and is reinterpreting that and so on it's it's a possibility yeah. and it, again it has to do with this pff, what is a country give a fuck on what a country is yeah. <laughs> that's not our problem <laughs> no, anyway know. next time we will carry on yes, yes. definitely thank you so much Good. For, uh, <clears throat> for everything for your time pleasure